In this video, I'm going to talk some more about things that you can do with our markdown, some of the fancier things. Um, so specifically, I'm going to talk a lot about using templates in this to create things with very specific styles. But there's also just loads that you can do with our markdown. And there's some really nice books out there now about doing it. So um, for example, you can create slides in PowerPoint. Um, I can show quickly a little bit how to do that. So when you go into new file in R Markdown, you get these choices not just for a document, but you can also do a presentation. And this gives you the chance to make a presentation out of PDF slides or out of PowerPoint now. Um, you can also do more complex projects, like you can write online books using Bookdown, and that's how our book for the course works. You can do um, um, websites using the package Blogdown. And so they're good resources out. There's a book on Bookdown, there's a book on Blogdown, and I think there's a new book on R Markdown in general that really goes through a lot of this. And all of those are available as well for free online. So for example, if you Google R Markdown, book. You can get into this new book, The Definitive Guide to Our Markdown, and you can see that that's got some of the basics that we were working on, but it's also got a lot more information about going through and doing other output. So it's got some on doing notebooks that are kind of like the Jupyter notebooks, um, PDF documents, Word documents, but also getting into things like presentations. Um, and dashboards, which we'll be doing some for our final project, and some of these different these different um, templates that we're going to be working with today. So there's a lot of a rich area that you can really explore to do fancy things with our markdown, and um, most of them are like, just a pretty straightforward extension of the stuff that we've already been doing. So in this video, I'm going to talk specifically about this idea of templates. So R Markdown templates can change these all these different elements of your output format. You can think of them kind of like those themes that we add sometimes to ggplot. So it really is adding a lot of the appear changing a lot of the appearance elements uh, for something that you're doing. As you move into this, for some of these templates, they're going to become very specific in terms of what output they can create. So up to now, you've worked with a lot of stuff where you could render it to Word, or you could take the same R Markdown file, and without any complications, you could render it to HTML, or if you had tech installed, you could render it to PDF. As we do some of these, they're really taking advantage of style files that are specific to a format. So things like CSS for HTML documents or LaTeX style files for PDF documents. And so it does start to get a little bit pickier for some of these outputs about exactly which output, you, uh, output format you're rendering to. When you do these, you actually have the choice to pick from these different templates when you select an R markdown. Now, the trick is um, a lot of these come in special packages, uh, additional packages, and so you do need to install these packages to use them. So I'm going to be working um, with some examples from one package called Tufty and one package called Articles. So you will need to install those if you don't have them already. And I can show here in the from template the names for those. So Articles is spelled this way. It's R-T-I-C-L-E-S. So you'll want to install that package if you don't have it already. And then the other one that we're going to be using is Tufty. That's T-U-F-T-E. So make sure that you install that. Once you install that, when you go, and I'll show this process again, when you go into File, do a new file in our Markdown, you have an option over here for From Template. And that's where you can pick out these templates. So to do many of these, a lot of these, a lot of them are rendering out to PDF. And so you do need to make sure that you have a tech engine on your computer to do that. Um, this is another open source piece of software, so it's pretty easy to get. It is a kind of large installation, so it might take a little while to download it, and you want to make sure you're somewhere with a good internet connection when you do it. For Macs, um, the, the version that you want to get is Mac Tech, and then for PCs, you're going to want to get Mic Tech. So I, I've put in the names of both of those, and you can Google both of those to get more information. You can also get some more if you look at latechproject.org um, in terms of doing that. So all of these are based on a piece of software created by Donald Knuth, who is possibly the, the greatest computer scientist of, of our time. 
And um, he very beautifully is versioning this based on the digits in pi. So as he makes changes, he just keeps going out with the digits in pi. And I think that I've heard that he has said that when he dies, he wants to freeze that version of tech, not make any more changes, and give it the version number of actually pi, which might be the first time a piece of software is versioned with a number that is is um, is something with, with infinite number of digits, which would be kind of cool. Um, all right, so we're going to look at one template called the Tufty template, and this is something that replicates the style of Edward Tufty's books. So Edward Tufty, we talked a little, about, a little bit about before with the data ink ratio. He specializes in data visualization, and he's written a series of books that really deeply explore how you can visualize and communicate information that's got a, a large data component to it. In writing his books, he actually came up with this really interesting typesetting style where it's got large margins on one side where he puts in references and margin notes and even figures and tables and things like that. So this package allows you to replicate that. And you can output it both for, for this specific template, you can output it both to HTML and to PDF. So let's take a look at that. If you go in, you can pick to do a Tufty handout and then click OK. This will give you a, a example. So just like when you do our markdown, when you open one of these, you don't get just something empty. You actually get um, a nice example that you can work with. So let's save this and render it and look at the output. And then we can go back and look at how that lines up with pieces that we have in this template. All right, so when we knit, we'll have some choices here. I suggest that you try knitting to, to the Tufty handout, but you can also knit to HTML, and there's even a way to create books out of this. This template itself is actually kind of nice because it serves almost as a vignette for this style. So the, the text in the template describes the different elements that are available and gives you some tips on how to use them and when you might want to use them. So it's actually an interesting read in itself, but then you can also use it as a starting point and change and put your own content in. All right, so um, it's got... As I mentioned before, like the area for the main text is a little bit smaller, and then it's got this large area for margins on the right hand side. And you can put different things in those margins, like you can put notes. So this is a note referencing right here. You can also put whole figures, you can put equations, um, you can put references. Let me see if I can find an example of a reference. I'm not seeing any of those immediately, but you can have it link up so any references that you do show up with the citation directly there where somebody can see it immediately. Um, you can also, if you want to, take up the whole space with the figure, so both the main text space and the margin space using this full width figure like that. So if we go back into the R Markdown itself, you can see there are a few special things that you can do. So there's this special convention now with a caret and then square brackets for putting in one of those margin notes. And there are also special options that you get with some of the some of the um, some of the code chunks. So this fig margin equals true. This is how it's setting that particular figure to show up in the margin rather than the main text. So this is the code that goes with this figure. And so that's putting it in the margin rather than showing it in the main part of the text. There's another one for full width figures that will let you specify something that shows up as the full width. There's also a new function that you get for working in the main text that will let you set this new thought style. So Tufty has a style where sometimes when he's starting a new thought, there'll be a series of words that are all in these small caps, kind of like this. And so you can set those up by using the R new thought and then you do the character string that you want like that. So there are all these special little pieces that you can put in with using this template. Um, there are also templates that go with different journal articles. And for a lot of journals, especially ones in kind of science, uh, statistics and math and physics, they'll actually allow you to submit a tech file 
rather than submitting a Word document. So you can create something and get it all the way to the point where you're ready to submit it because most of these, most of these templates will include an output of the tech file in addition to the PDF. These are really nice because you can really see the article as it will look when it shows up in, in print at the end of the process. So let's look at that. These are all in the articles package. So you need to make sure you've installed that. And just as a reminder, the spelling for that is articles, but without the A. So it starts with R. We can look at this example for an R journal submission. So we do the same thing. We go into template and we can select that. And this time it's actually going to create a whole folder for us instead of creating a single file. So you can see over here that we've now gotten this whole um, subdirectory in our project directory. Inside of that, it includes a few things. So we've got our R Markdown document, and this is the one we'll actually work on. But it's also got a style file. This is what, what kind of takes all the elements and puts it, put, adds the style elements in. It's also got a separate figure. So this is just the R logo, but we'll see that that's being input as a figure into this article. So if you have figures that you're not creating with R, you can include those in the directory and then, and then pull them in to show them in the text. And then the last thing, it's got this bibliographical um, uh, data set. And this is using a system called BibTeX that allows you to actually like, like, um, put all your references in and then cite them inside an R Markdown document. And this is something, by the way, that you can do not just in these article templates, but you can use BibTeX as a citation um, uh, system for any of your R Markdown documents that you're creating. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But when we knit this, it'll go to PDF and we'll actually get quite a few different output uh, pieces there. So part of what it does with the style file here is it's creating all these different outputs, including a .tech one, and this .tech one is the, the main piece we would actually wanna to submit to the journal. Um, so this is the output. You can see now that it really is looking like a journal article. So it's got all of these pieces of information and things like, like font, font face and font type that, that are specific to that journal for different elements of the journal. Just like with a main R markdown, you can include figures that are created specifically from R code. And that R code, you can see, goes in a chunk uh, right here, just like it normally would. You can also use that include graphics to include an outside graphic. It's also got pieces here. So here's where it's using a citation with that bibliographical information. And here's another example of citing something that, that, um, that um, is outside of parentheses. So you're citing it in the main text and then just the years in parentheses. You can see if you go down that there's also a bibliography where that information got, got linked in. So let's look just briefly at that part as well. So there are a few places where that links in. First of all, wherever you have saved your bibliographical information, your bib tech file, that's the file that ends.bib, and that's just a plain text file, but it ends.bib you need to give the link to that file with bibliography in the YAML. So that's making the connection of all of my citations you can find in that file. Then in this file, you put the entry for each thing that you might wanna cite. And you put this code as kind of like a key that you'll reference in the main text, but then all the rest of the information is here. And you can learn the whole process for kind of typing out all of these elements, but you also can get a lot of it directly from Google Scholar. So if we go and look at Google Scholar, um, we could look at R for data science maybe. So that's a book, the book by Hadley. If I can get that directly. All right, so here's the book. If you go into the quote, then that in Google Scholar will give you the chance to see different different citation styles. You can actually go into BibTeX and it'll give you that plain text version. So at that point you can copy it and you just paste it in to your BibTeX file. This becomes the code that you use to reference this in your other version. So we can come here and we can add in the reference. So a regular reference in parentheses 
will be in square brackets and then you use at and then you use that key. And the ones just in the text look like just at and then r. So if we wanted to add this new one, we could do um let's see here, we'll do one in parentheses. And then we could say like as noted in that one. All right. So now when we knit it, you'll see that it's made that connection with that with that key in our bibtech file. In theory. Oh, I didn't find those. Let me see. Did I save that? Let's try again with it saved. All right, there we go. So you can see it's added that in and it has used the style file for this particular journal to see what the referencing style is and its last name and then year. And so it's put it in there. When we did it in square brackets, it put it in parentheses like you would at the end of a sentence where you're referencing something or the end of a thought. And then here it's let us do it without putting it in parentheses. And then you can see anything that gets cited in that main text gets picked up in the bibliography. Um, and you can make changes like this one wasn't exactly perfect when we brought it in, like maybe since this is a book, we want these capitalized and this quotation around O'Reilly probably isn't quite right. So we could go back in and we can make those changes here as well. We can clean up that. And then we can make some changes to these as well. And sometimes, so for books, typically, I think it will let you do all uppercase, but sometimes you need to actually protect uppercase letters, like for some articles, it might not all show. So if you want to do something literally, you can put it in an extra set of the squiggly brackets in this. So we can try that as well. All right, and that's improved that a little bit. The other thing to show for this whole bibliographical process is that often you will need to include a section at the end that kind of links to a bibliography. I think in this case, some of that's put in with the style file. So in this case, it looks like they didn't do that, but often that is something that, will, that you'll need to put in, like you just need to do another section here for references if you were doing this in a, in a regular or markdown document rather than inside one of the templates. All right, so these notes just talk a little bit more about that. It talks about what you get when you originally open the template and then after you render it the first time in terms of having some of those different tech files. Um, the PDF itself, the final version that gets rendered, that will show up for the R journal is rjournalwrapper.pdf. And these details are a little specific to the different templates. So sometimes you have to explore those different templates to figure out exactly how they work. Some of these will also incorporate some LaTeX into the R markdown. So a lot of times if you're trying to do very specific things, you really do need to use LaTeX, which is has a lot more flexibility and a lot more power than R markdown. It's it's a lot more to learn than markdown. Like markdown is pretty simple and straightforward to learn initially, but um, with that simplicity comes a little bit of limitation in terms of what you can do. So for example, in some, you might see this like site P and site T, that is a version of citation that, that differs a little bit that allows some more specificity than the way that you might do it with R markdown, which is like the at that I just showed. Um, you can do a lot of different stuff in markdown with LaTeX. Um, the only rule is once you kind of get into env an environment where you're doing LaTeX, you can't switch back and forth between the two. So if you're using LaTeX to create a bulleted list, for example, you can't then use um, like the asterisk inside to make something bold. You need to use the LaTeX command to, to make things bold. You can also create your own template. Um, this is more of a process because you really do have to understand some of these output formats and things like CSS if you're trying to do HTML or the LaTeX style files if you're trying to do something that would render to PDF. But you do have that power. And um, if you do find that you're using R Markdown lots and lots, it might be something that you want to explore in the future. So for example, if you have 
a certain style of report that you always make and you have um, font that you want to have for that and you have like paragraph spacing and margin widths and, and things like that, then it might be worthwhile to make one of your own templates. And there's some information um, available through our studio that gives some tips for doing that.